Welcome to Go Engineers Shape Your World session on metal casting and plastic molding. We are going to use the Disco Inferno BattleBot for both of our analyses on metal casting and plastic molding. We're going to start with metal casting and we're going to use Click to Cast by Solid Thinking. Click to Cast is casting simulation in five easy steps. We open the geometry. We define the end gate and mesh. We set up the process parameters. We run the calculations. And then we analyze the results. The part we're going to use is the tooth on the spinning disc. The first step of the process is we're going to define some additional components. Because we have modeled the end gate and the riser, we need to add a sleeve around the riser to insulate it. So we'll go to sleeve, and we're going to pick the faces of our riser. And then we'll step through the wizard. The next step is to define the end gate. We can use an automatic end gate, which will apply the end gate to the entire face that we choose, or we can use an advanced end gate where we define the shape, whether it's rectangular or round. We want round, and then we define the diameter. And then we also define the plane that it will be on. And for ours, it'll be the XZ plane. Then we pick the area that we want the end gate defined on. And then the next step is to define the mesh. We're going to use the default size, so we just hit Create Mesh. Once the mesh is finished, we'll just hit Next on the wizard. And now we define our part material and our mold material. So we're going to use carbon steel and we're going to use green sand for the mold. For the sleeve parameters we're going to leave those at the defaults and for our gravity it will be in the negative Y and we're going to use fill time of four seconds. Then we just hit next on the wizard and we can have just the filling analysis or we can have both the filling and the solidification. We want both and then we'll hit calculate. Once the calculation is finished we can look at the results. There's a couple of main ones we want to look at in the filling process. The first is the flow front that shows us how the part fills. The next one we might want to look at is the temperature so we can see what the final temperature of the part is. We can then look at the velocities and that will tell us if we have turbulent areas in the filling process that we might want to change. And then we want to look at air traps. So this will show us if we have any trapped air uh, where we might want to move the riser or add a vent. Now we're going to look at the solidification results. And the main one we want to look at is how the part solidifies. So the area in red is what's liquid. And we want to make sure that the last place to solidify is in the gate and or riser. And that's what our model has. This tells us that we have a good location for the gate and we have a good location for the riser. Another look at that is the porosity. And we can see our porosity is up in the riser where we want it. And that is a look at metal casting with click to cast. Now we're going to look at SOLIDWORKS plastics for plastic injection molding. We're going to look at an LED light and we're going to mold the housing. Similar to click to cast, SOLIDWORKS plastics uses six simple steps to set up the analysis. We create the mesh, we define the polymer, we define the fill settings. We define the injection locations. We run the calculations. And then we analyze the results. Our first analysis is going to be a single cavity for the LED housing. The first step of our analysis is to create the mesh. And we're going to use the shell mesh with the automatic setting. This is going to analyze the geometry and pick the mesh size for us and then mesh the part. Once the part is meshed, 
we get the rest of our study tree. The next thing we do is define the polymer that we want to use. So we're going to go into material and we're going to open the polymer database. The polymer database can either be sorted by family of plastic or the company that manufactures the plastic. We want to look at the family and we're going to go to PPS. We'll go into our PPS and we want to use our Phillips R4. And then we can look at the material data that is in the library. So we have our viscosity curves, we have our PVT curves, and we have our polymer properties. So melt temperature, mold temperature, ejection temperature, glass transition temperature, and all of the other data that we need to run the analysis. If the material that we need is not in the database, we can create our own user defined. After we apply the polymer, we can go into the process parameters. The main one is the fill settings. It will default to settings for the material that we chose for fill time, melt temperature, mold temperature, and the last one is our injection pressure limit. And that is based on the machine that we're going to use to mold the part. We're going to leave all of these at the default. The next thing we're going to do is add our injection location. We are going to inject on this end of the part and then we'll add our injection location. If we wanted to have multiple injection locations, we can do that. We can have as many as we need. In this case, it's a simple part, so one will work. Those are the critical steps in setting up the analysis. Now we're ready to run. So we're going to go to flow and we're going to run. Once the solver is finished, the first thing we want to look at is the results advisor. It gives us an indication of the pressure needed to fill the part. In this case, we are in the middle range. We're at almost 65 megapascal for a 100 megapascal machine. Next thing we want to look at is the fill time. The fill time gives us a nice animation of the part filling. First thing we're looking for is whether the part fills completely or not. The next thing we want to look at is the full pressure plot for the part. Like the advisor told us, 65 megapascal was the highest pressure, but this also gives us the pressure gradient within the part. The next thing we want to look at is the shear stress. The shear stress in the part can give us an idea of where we might have warpage in the part. The next thing we're going to look at is the volumetric shrinkage. This gives us an idea of how much the part needs to be scaled so that it shrinks to the correct size. Next thing we're going to look at are sink marks. This will show us any areas in the model that have sink marks that we might want to make design changes. The next thing we look at is do we have any weld lines in the part? Weld lines can be visual defects or they could also be structural defects. The last thing we're going to look at in the results are the air traps. So we can see we have one area on the end of the part that has an air trap and we want to try to vent that when we manufacture the mold. So this gives us a look at our single cavity injection molding. The next analysis we're going to run is two cavities with the runner and gate system modeled in SOLIDWORKS. We're also going to use a solid mesh for this analysis and we're going to use the manual method. The first step of the meshing process is that SOLIDWORKS analyzes the geometry. Once it analyzes the geometry, it finds all the bodies in the model. We have three bodies, two cavities and one runner system. The first body is a cavity. The second body is a cavity. The third body is our runner system. So we change it to runner and we hit apply. Then we hit next through the wizard. Next is setting the size of the mesh and we could also do local refinement if we wanted. We'll hit mesh with just the global mesh and then we'll hit next through the wizard. Hitting next through the wizard we're going to use a tetrahedral solid mesh and then we'll hit next 
And we're also going to use the hybrid method of generating the mesh. We'll hit next, next, and then OK. Just like using shell meshes, once you mesh, you get the rest of the study tree. Now we're going to apply our polymer, which is going to be the same PPS as we used before, R4. We're also going to use the default fill settings, just like we did with the shell mesh. And now we're going to add our injection location. We want to make sure that our pointer diameter is large enough to cover the entire end of the runner system. And now we're ready to run the flow analysis. Once the calculation finishes, we have all the same results as we did with the single cavity. We can see by the result advisor that the pressure is a little bit higher because we have the full runner system and two cavities. The other thing we want to look at is whether both cavities fill at the same time. They do in this case because they're identical cavities with symmetrical runner system. We would look at all of the same results that we did with the single cavity. So that's a look at a multiple cavity with the runner and gate system modeled in SOLIDWORKS. The last analysis we're going to run is a symmetry example. We're going to use solid mesh with this, just like we did with the two cavity and full runner system. So we'll go into a manual mesh. We'll make sure that our cavity is set to cavity, and we'll make sure that our runner is set to runner. Use the same mesh size as we did for the other one. And we'll work our way through the wizard. First thing we're going to do is set up our symmetry condition. So we'll go into our symmetry face and we'll box select that face, making sure it doesn't select anything behind it, and we'll hit apply and we'll hit OK. From here, the rest of the setup is identical to the two cavity with the full runner system. And then we're ready to run the flow analysis. And once the solver's done, we can look at all of the same results that we have been. And that was a look at how to use symmetry in a analysis. Mm -hmm.